What's up, Cougar Nation? Matt Biamonte and Mitch Harper. Day 11, BYU Camp, Cade Finnegan Day here, and he saw a lot of action. From what we observed today, there was a lot of situational work, Mitch, a two-minute drill type stuff. It was Jacob Conover, Cade Finnegan. Jacob Conover, I think, just continued to impress. He's really had a really nice fall camp. He had a number of great throws today. Yeah, coming away with Conover looking like a guy that could be a QB1 in the Big 12 era. I think that's the positive thing that we're seeing the past week from Conover and the statements that Roderick has issued to the media in the offseason and early in camp. It's being backed up, at least with our eyes. What we're seeing, the way he's throwing the ball, the, the timing and the ball placement too. I think he's doing a nice job. And I think, the, honestly, you know, we saw a little bit of back and forth where the offense had some success. Defense continues to have moments of success. And honestly, I think if you're a Cougar fan watching this, that's what you got to hope for is that both sides are having success because you don't want it just be completely one-sided. Uh, so BYU, it, it's just showing how balanced and how deep this team is. The play of the day was a pick six from Caleb Hayes. Cade Finnegan, it, it was not a well-thrown ball. Caleb Hayes uh, intercepted it with ease. Pick six is relative because half of the offensive group was on the field. So a little Stanford band situation, but in a real game that would have been a, a, a pick six. And th the defense just continues to make plays uh, throughout all the situational work we saw. No touchdown scored by the offense. There was a missed field goal, a long field goal from Cash Peterman. So uh, it, I guess if you had to pick a winner, you'd probably lean defense. But there were plenty of nice offensive plays made as well. Talmadge Gunther maybe had the catch of the day on an intermediate uh, post route catch, uh, Braden Cosper, Chase Roberts in the mix as well. So I think you summed it up well there, Mitch, with uh, a lot of back and forth. Yeah, and I think you know some of the names you mentioned again highlights the depth of this team. You know BYU comes into the season number 25 of the country in the AP poll. I think they're being slept on. We talked to Jacob Robinson, you and I, Matt, and he feels this team should be top 10. And you know I don't know if it's their top 10 good. I think they're top 15 good. And I think that what I'm seeing in fall camp, uh, this team is being slept on. And what a great spot to where they're ranked, yet. It still feels like there's no respect given to them. Great spot for this team to honestly prove the doubters wrong. And because and, I think there's still it's still fair to have some doubts when it comes to defense. But you're seeing some signs. And I thought it was great, too, after and you had a great tweet about it, Matt, was the work Tyler Batty is getting hands on work one on one with Jan Jorgensen. That is music to the ears of Cougar fans because it slaps a little different when the Janimal is hands-on in the dirt with Batty. That right there, that might be good for two sacks this season. I'm just telling you. like That was like, okay, that's going to bump him up from four to six sacks. I mean, Jan Jorgensen, if there's someone who knows how to get to the quarterback, it's that guy. And seeing him work with Batty, I thought that was pretty neat. And there was a moment in, in the situational stuff where Batty was going up against Blake Freeland. And... We've been here enough now where I think there's a really good sense of what the line's going to look like. It's going to be Freeland at left, Clark Barrington at guard, Connor Pay, Harris Lachance has been in there a lot with the yeah. with the ones at right guard, and then Kingsley Suamataia at right tackle. But Batty was going up against Freeland. Maybe he beat Freeland. He flushed Conover out of the pocket. In a real situation, maybe that turns into a sack. Conover rolls out, uh, makes a completion. But I thought it was noteworthy that – Batty was getting pressure on Blake Freeland, who is someone who's receiving a lot of NFL draft buzz. So uh, I, I expect big things from Tyler Batty this year, and it's what we've seen in full camp. Yeah, Batty's going to be uh, – he's going to have a big year, I think. And, and I think the work that Jan Jorgensen is going to have with him, I think is going to pay dividends. Another interesting news item, we talked about it a couple days ago, but we didn't see Down Holker in previous practices. We saw him today. He was dressed, uh, gave it a little bit of a go during the media observation portion. Again, we don't know how much he had work-wise before the media window, but during the media observation, he did play a little bit and was suited up. Didn't see Gunnar Romney uh, suited up, so he continues to get additional rest. But still, uh, I thought it was noteworthy to see Holker back out on the field. Same applies to, to Puka Nakua. We know from all the B-roll video that he's practicing, but haven't seen him at the end of practice in a, in a few days. I don't think that means a whole lot. A, a, a few more notes to wrap things up here from day 11. I thought it was really interesting the the wide receiver grouping with Jacob Conover today. Granted, you'd have Romney and Puka in there, but it was Braden Cosper, Keanu Hill, Isaac Rex, and Chase Roberts. So I think Braden Cosper and Chase Roberts have maybe separated themselves a little bit from a guy like Cody Epps. Yeah, I think so. And, and Epps, you know, he was a guy at the scrimmage last Saturday uh, was held out uh, you know, we've seen him out here, and 
But I think there is, you're right, there's been separation where he might be wide receiver six. It feels like Cosper was maybe the name that was sleeping on a little bit. He's emerged maybe as wide receiver four. And then you go Chase Roberts, probably wide receiver five. So uh, I think that's where it's trending with the wide receivers. And Keanu Hill, after that day one drop, he's had a nice camp. He's made some nice catches, and he's living up to our producer, Dallin Graff's prediction, saying he's going to be wide receiver three, which pains me to say no. I'm glad for Keanu. Keep Hold up. on. We decided it's going to come down to snaps played against the Bulls. That that, that's going to yeah. determine right. it. That's fair. But I, I think safe to say, though, BYU's got some really good receivers. I mean, you mentioned Gunther earlier, and he's a guy that probably wide receiver 8, 9, who knows what it is. But he's a guy that's capable. I think there'd be some trust there. Like, he could go in. He knows the offense. Like, this wide receiver room is so deep, and they're talented, and they're good. And, and I just think that, again, this BYU team has – the makings to be one of the great BYU offenses that we've seen in the 21st century. And I think that's not a a hot take. I just think there's so much talent. And even if they have to dig into the depth, they're still going to maintain a high level of production. Last thing, uh, I think it's noteworthy. Caleb Page had that pick six who we mentioned, but the guy who was targeted a lot and made a lot of plays, D'Angelo Mandel broke up several passes in first team work he was opposite of Caleb Hayes they went after him early there was a lot of passes from Conover to Chase Roberts several of those batted away by D'Angelo Mandel so uh, that defensive back room Mitch is looking nice well and and it's even nicer when you hear General Guilford coming out and saying because we know this coaching staff they love a good coach speak line not all of them but most of them love a good coach speak line Gerald Guilford just straight up said this is the best cornerback room since the days of Tim McTire, since the days of Omar the Blanket Morgan. I mean, that was back in 96. So you're talking 26 years, best cornerback room. I mean, even better some some of General Guilford's cornerback room. So that's high praise from Coach G. And that, to me, says he thinks there might be, you know, two professional defensive backs in his room because there was two pro DBs in that one. So I think that's, again, another positive development that we've seen emerge in fall camp because I think the arrival of Judy Lally put D'Lo on notice. It put uh, Caleb Hayes on notice. You better step your game up because this guy, is a wa- he's a starter. He's a proven commodity. If you're not ready to go, you're going to be hitting the bench. So I think it's elevated everyone's play, and that's ultimately what you love about the portal is that it brings out the best in everyone when, when hot shots that are proven commodities come into the program. South Florida prep is uh, underway. They, they've started that preparation. There'll be one more scrimmage this Saturday. We'll have a coach live on Cougar Sports Saturday like we did last week. You can hear that 102.7 FM, 12 to 3 this Saturday as uh, Camp Kalani winding down as uh, preparation for the Bulls is starting to ramp up. So for Mitch Harper, Matt Piamonte, kslsports.com.